I was driving home and all of a sudden steam starts spraying out from under the hood and it's this little T connector here. You see me wiggle it. You see how that's separated there. So it's interesting that Dodge uses a plastic fitting there and it also there may be like a special tool to pull the hoses out of there otherwise you probably just have to cut them I'm gonna see if I can kinda split this plastic and slide the hose out of there the reason is there's a little bit of give here you can probably get away with cutting these and putting a new T in there but if not then you gotta splice in even more hose if you're interested in saving money and not buying a, I think it's a $200 part from Dodge and also making it sturdier, you can buy a metal T-fitting and I'll post a link. It's basically an inch on here and a half inch on there. If you need to splice in more hose because you don't have enough workable hose to connect one of these, then you just use these one inch splices. What's crazy is the hose going onto there is not an inch. It's either a three quarter or five eighths, and then the one that goes over the half inch I think is a three eighths. So I don't know why the confusing specifications there, but anyway, this is the part that you need to replace that T connector, and of course you're going to need three of these, one for each side of the big side of the T and one for the smaller side and since I wasn't sure I just grabbed a handful of them but I think it's probably going to be those. Right, I got a hose cutter. I gave them a good look and I don't see any way to remove that fitting from the hose end so cutting seems to be the only way. Once we get it off the car we'll see if if that's true it's cut out I don't think there was a easy way to film actually cutting it couldn't do that on camera but you see I've wrestled it into place and although it's technically connected from the heater core to the intake manifold uh, really needs about a half inch more that's what she said so I'm probably gonna go ahead and just replace this hose right here with a little bit longer hose. And that way there won't be so much tension on it. And also I'll be able to seat that fully because right now it's only about halfway seated. I don't think it would leak, but that's not the sort of thing I wanna find out the hard way. <laughs> So I just measured the old hose and it came out to about six inches and then I measured the new hose at about eight inches just to give it a little extra room there. As you know, you can always cut some off if you have too much, but it's kind of a pain to add some if you cut it too short to start with. And then fitting it on there, it's a really tight fit, so just take your time and wrestle it on there. You can heat the hose up and try to form it into shape if you want. And then I just reuse the factory clamp on that side. And then put a you know, normal clamp on the other side there. And couldn't really film putting it together, but that's what the final result looked like. This is what it looks like, and it's held up really well since it was installed. This is the bleeder valve for refilling the coolant. Just loosen the two clamps, and then you can remove the intake hose to get it out of the way so that you can remove the bleeder valve.
And this is my method for mixing coolant. I take an empty bottle, fill it halfway with coolant, and then halfway with distilled water, and then dump the other half of distilled water into the coolant bottle, and now I've got two gallons. The refill process is pretty straightforward. Just pour it in the overfill tank until it starts to trickle out of the bleeder valve, then close up the bleeder valve and finish pouring into the overfill tank until it reaches the proper level as indicated on the overflow tank. And yes, I am using the universal stuff instead of the Dodge Orange. I've always had good luck with it and I will continue to do so. Then just put everything back together and retighten the clamps and you're ready to go.